Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're going to be talking about how to properly supply voltage to analog supply pins on an integrated circuit when you also have digital supply pins. Now, I feel like in a lot of the one minute design reviews that we get, we see people trying to use ferrites to isolate digital and analog pins. And of course, I discourage this for some reasons that I will explain in this video. I think there are better ways to do it using power supplies, and we're gonna investigate that in this video. We'll also look at some results from a design con paper that gives some guidance on when to use ferrite beads to isolate digital pins from analog pins. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So before we get started looking at some design examples, let's take a look at that viewer question. Morton Nisov writes, Zach, for separating analog and digital power supply cases, what would you recommend instead? A dedicated LDO for the analog rail, LC filter, or in many cases, maybe even nothing necessary? This is a really great question, and we've looked at this from a couple of different perspectives in the past. We have looked at this from the perspective of LC filters and what some of the risks are of using LC filters on high impedance inputs. We've also looked at this from the perspective of using PDN simulations when you have a ferrite used for branching two different rails supplied by a single power supply circuit. There are some important risks to consider if you plan on branching a rail off of a main digital rail and using it to supply an analog power pin because the digital rail can put noise onto the analog rail and vice versa due to the fact that they have transfer impedance between them. Now, of course, when you put a ferrite bead, the ferrite could make the problem better or it could make the problem worse. It really depends on what exactly you're trying to isolate. So let's take a look at some design examples that have been submitted for the one minute design review series and we can see the exact types of situations we're talking about and then we'll discuss some paths forward to properly supply power to your analog supply pins. So before we take a look at the best way to supply power to an analog supply pin or a voltage reference pin, let's take a look at some design examples so we can see the exact type of situation we're talking about. Here inside of Altium Designer, you can see we have one of the designs that was sent in for our one minute design review series. And this one was sent in by Naeem Antu. Now the way this design works is we have either battery or DC jack supplying power and that forms power on our VIN net and then the VIN gets regulated down to 3.3 volts. Now that 3.3 volts is then fed over here to a microcontroller and you can see on this STM32 we have VDD and VDDA pins as well as a VREF pin. Now you can see here what he's done on these pins just by looking at this pinout. Here on the VDD and VDDA pin, he supplied the 3.3 volt power directly. But then what he's done is he's branched off using a ferrite bead to form another rail. And that secondary rail is being fed over here to the VREF pin. Now the VREF pin is not a supply pin, but it does need to have a low noise voltage supplied to it because that is the voltage reference that the internal ADC will use to then convert a analog signal into a digital signal. Now that VREF pin needs to be low noise, but it also needs to be stable against temperature changes. So we'll see why that's important here in just a little bit when we talk about best practices. Let's take a look at another example from Vincent Nguyen. And in this example, we can see other examples of branching using ferrite beads for isolation. Here in this example, we can see that we have a power supply outputting a five volts rail. And then you can see here, we have a branch that occurs off of this five volt rail and passing through a ferrite bead. The ferrite bead then supplies power into these other downstream power supplies, where it is then regulated further to get down to a final 3.3 volt supply. Now I would say this example is actually less bad because instead of going straight into a microcontroller pin like an analog supply pin, they're actually going into another regulator and that other regulator will have some power supply rejection associated with it. It can then output this 3.3 volts to some various circuitry in the design. But you'll notice here, this is a switching regulator. So you basically just swapped what would be PDN noise or noise associated with the ferrite bead for switching noise from a switching regulator. Now you can see one other thing that Vincent has done in this design. You can see here that he branched off to this LDO and this LDO outputs an analog 3V3 signal. 
So again, he's taking something that would be noisy coming from a switching regulator, putting it through an LDO, and then outputting this at 3.3 volts. We'll see why all of this is important again once we start looking at some best practices. We've also seen some designs where the power pins for the analog supply and the digital supply are just bridged directly together. Take a look at this design from James Williams. You can see here on the microcontroller, this is an STM32, and the VDD pins and the VDDA pin are all bridged together together to the same net. There's no isolation at all, and there's not even a separate supply for these pins. Here, if we also take a look at this design from Menka Veerman, we basically have the same thing happening. Here, if I just scroll over to the STM32 block here, you can see here that all of the power and ground pins have been broken out into their own symbol, but here we also have that same kind of bridging. We have the VDD pins bridged directly to the VDDA pins on the 3.3 volt rail. So which of these is the best option? Should you just connect all the pins directly together on the same rail? Should you use a ferrite bead? Should they have separate supplies? And what if you have a reference voltage pin? Should it also be bridged to the main digital supply rail or should it have its own power supply? These are all really important questions. And since this all comes up in the context of using ferrite beads, as we saw in the viewer question, let's actually dig just a little bit deeper and look at some research results from a design con paper from 2011. And this is a design con paper that I have referenced many times in other videos. And I've mistakenly said that it's a design con paper from 2014. But this design con paper does a deep dive on the use of filtering to separate these digital supply pins from analog supply pins when you have a common PDN interconnect. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the presentation that we're going to look at is shown here on screen. And this presentation is titled PDN Application of Ferrite Beads. It is by Steve Weir, CTO of IP Blocks. Now, I don't know if Steve is still in business, but this is a really great presentation. And if you want to get access to this presentation, you can follow the link in the video description or you can navigate to my website and I have a specific list of research that I frequently cite in my presentations. And this particular presentation is located in this list right down here, as you can see on screen. So what does Steve have to say about the use of ferrite beads in a PDN specifically for isolation purposes? Well, he actually outlines two different instances and one of them supports everything that we all know about ferrite beads in series on digital supply pins. Here you can see he has a slide dedicated to when doesn't series isolation make sense. So this is the case of putting a ferrite bead directly onto the power pin of a digital supply. And we should all know from copious simulations, data from others in the literature, and from input from experts, that this is generally a bad practice because transients can get excited on the digital PDN, and those transients can then appear as a large voltage due to the high impedance of that ferrite bead. But what about the case of isolating an analog rail from a digital rail? Well, let's suppose that we have a case where we start from a common PDN interconnect sort of like what you see here on screen with this 3.3 volt rail. Now, if we're starting from a common PDN interconnect and then we branch off into these different loads, you can see here that it is possible to place an impedance Z in between the common P PDN interconnect and load number one. Well, this impedance Z would basically be like our isolating ferrite bead. Here, one of our loads is our digital power supply. And then over here, where I'm circling load one, that would be like our analog power supply. But he then puts an asterisk next to it. He says, the more tolerant loads need to be over bypassed in order to meet the sensitive load noise requirements. What exactly does that mean? What does over bypassed mean? Well, it means you basically need to have a lot of bypass capacitance, including plane capacitance on that common PDN interconnect for that digital rail. If you have enough of this bypass capacitance on that digital rail, it's then possible that you could have a small enough transient that if you then did have the ferrite bead isolating the analog rail, you would see appreciably small transient leakage over to that analog supply pin, and then it may not interfere with the load current. 
Now, Steve backs this up with a little bit of experimental evidence. Here you can see he's showing some measurement examples for PLL noise sensitivity on a gigabit Surtees link. Here you can see the PLL oscilloscope trace without the ferrite bead has pretty significant jitter of 110 picoseconds. And then you can see here, once he places a damped ferrite bead filter, that the jitter is reduced to 48 picoseconds. Now, does this magically work in every design? Well, of course, you have to test it to verify that it actually works. And to see an instance where it doesn't work, take a look at this article on the Altium website. You can see here that if we scroll down, Kellenack presents some experimental evidence that shows the opposite result in a similar case of blocking a power lead for a PLL from the main digital rail. You can see here that when we have the ferrite bead in series with the power lead, you can see that placement of the ferrite bead actually increases the noise. Then if you remove the ferrite bead on that power lead, you can see here that the noise goes away. So what's the deal? Does applying the ferrite bead between the digital and analog pins work or does it not work? Well, according to Steve, this is a damped ferrite bead filter, which I think is really important because if it's damped, you're gonna have a small transient response leak over to the analog pin. Also, it's a bit difficult to make any more generalized statements about these two situations based on the information presented in these resources because they don't present anything about the specific characteristics of the ferrites they used in these experiments. So unfortunately, we can really only include that it might work for isolation between a digital and analog rail, but you should always verify it with testing. Now clearly, proper application of a ferrite bead between a digital supply pin and an analog supply pin, or equivalently, between a digital supply pin and a reference voltage supply pin, is a difficult design problem. You have to design in damping, you probably have to do some simulations, and you probably have to do some testing to verify that it actually works. So what's a lower effort path forward that gives you better results? Well, we can see a few things here, depending on whether we're talking about analog supply or whether we're talking about reference voltage supplies. So first, let's take a look again at Vincent Nguyen's design. You can see here that he is supplying the main rail for his system into an LDO and he's creating a dedicated analog supply. I really think that this is the absolute best path forward if you want to have high precision analog measurements. By using a dedicated analog supply, you could then supply different rails to your different digital and analog pins, such as you see here on this STM32 part number. This way you won't have to bridge them because when you bridge them, you do have a risk that any noise created on this digital rail from these digital IOs then gets seen on the analog rail and interferes with your analog measurements. Now, what about this STM32 design? Well, here you can see that there's a VREF pin broken off on pin five, and then we have a shared digital and analog supply. Well, here pin six is shared among the digital and analog supplies, so there's really no way that you can break off a separate analog supply. However, you have this separate analog voltage reference. Now, I would say that using the ferrite bead here or using an LC filter here coming off of the 3.3 volt rail may not be the best option. If you really want to get precise analog measurements with this VREF pin, what you should do is have a dedicated analog supply for that VREF pin using an LDO. Another option is to do what was done in this design, which is to use a precision voltage reference. Now precision voltage references are available in a range of different voltages and they can be used on ADCs or on microcontrollers to provide a highly stable voltage to the analog subsystem. These components also tend to have very low temperature coefficients, meaning that the output voltage exhibits very little change if the temperature of the system changes. That's really advantageous for a lot of analog electronics, especially when you need to get very precise analog measurements. Now, what about the case where all three are separated, where you have your digital supply pins, you have your analog supply pins, and then you have an analog reference? Well, in that case, you would basically need two different supplies and a precision voltage reference to get the absolute best results. Now, you could combine the analog supply pin onto the voltage reference pin so that they're supplied by the same power supply circuit if you want to you might consider adding in some filtering between the analog supply and the precision voltage reference. You could do that very easily using an LC filter, or 
you could use a ferrite, but once again, you're gonna wanna test it to make sure that it actually works and that it doesn't create any transient bleed through to that voltage reference pin. I think the moral of the story is this. If you are going to use a power supply that combines your digital and analog rails or your analog and your voltage reference pins, you should make sure that supply is low noise. No switching regulators on the analog and voltage reference supply pins. Make sure to use an LDO. Now, could you use an LDO for all three of these tied together? Well, sure, you could, but you always have to be mindful of having those digital pins excite a transient on the PDN which then gets seen as a voltage disturbance on the analog pin and on your voltage reference pin. Whatever you do, make sure to test and measure it to prove that it actually works. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. And as always, thank you for all the great questions. Make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comment section, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.